You are about to see a dramatization of an unemployment compensation appeals hearing. In this video, we'll explain how you can prepare for your hearing by gathering evidence and arranging for a witness. We'll show you how to present your side of the story at the hearing and give you some tips for answering and asking questions. By watching this dramatization, you will increase your chances of winning your unemployment compensation case. The time and place of the hearing is set out in the notice of the hearing. If you have a conflict with the date, you should immediately contact the appeals referee and ask for a continuance. That means that the hearing will be scheduled for another date. Sometimes the notice will say that the hearing will take place over the telephone. If you want to have the referee hear your case in person, you should contact the referee and request an in-person hearing. Hello, my name is James Williams. I'll be conducting the hearing. This case concerns a sterile worker claimant and ABC Mills Incorporated. The purpose of this hearing is to determine whether or not Ms. Worker is entitled to receive unemployment benefits. The hearing will be presided over by an appeals referee. The referee is a lawyer who works for the Employment Security Commission. He will make his decision based on law and the facts presented. Who is here from ABC Mills? I am, sir. My name is Bob Bossman. I'm from ABC Mills in Newton. A representative of the employer will probably be present. The employer will present his side of the story about why the employee was fired and why she should not get unemployment benefits. Which of you is Ms. Worker? I am, sir. Estelle Worker is the claimant. She was discharged from her job at ABC Mills. She should be prepared to tell her side of the story and show that she is entitled to unemployment benefits. And who are you, miss? My name is Sally Best. Estelle's my sister, and I'm here to testify for her. Estelle brought her sister as a witness to testify for her. Each side can bring witnesses who have first-hand knowledge about the facts that affect the case. I see that neither side is represented by an attorney. Is that correct? Sometimes attorneys or paralegals will represent one of the sides at the hearing. If your employer brings an attorney to your hearing, you will not be allowed to postpone the hearing so you can get your own lawyer. Do not let it upset you if your employer has an attorney. Before the hearing begins, the appeals referee will usually tell everyone how the hearing will be run. Before we get started, I'd like to give you an idea as to how the hearing will be run. The testimony is taken under oath and is tape recorded. This will be the last chance that you will have to present evidence in this case. Once I call this hearing to order, I'll give a brief background of the case for the record. Afterwards, I will ask you some questions. After I've asked the questions, I'll let you testify. After you testify, I'll let the other side ask you questions. Please do not interrupt one another while the other is testifying. During the hearing, each person who is going to give testimony will first be questioned by the referee. They will then have a chance to give their testimony. When they are through, the other side will have a chance to ask them questions. This is called cross-examination. I'm going to ask all three of you to place your left hands on the Bible and raise your right hands. Do each of the three of you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I call the hearing to order. The appeals hearing is now in session under docket number Roman numeral 11-B-23782 in the matter of Estelle Worker Claimant and ABC Mills Incorporated. The matter is being heard... After everyone has taken the oath, the referee will call the hearing to order and give a short description of the case. The matter has come on for hearing as a result of Claimant's timely appeal from the determination of claims adjudicator John Doe disqualifying the claimant from receiving unemployment benefits. Present is the claimant, Estelle Worker, and her witness, Sally Best. Present for the employer is Bob Bossman. Prior to the hearing, the parties reviewed the case file. Documents are marked as Commission's Exhibits 1 through 7 and are made a part of the record. 
Reviewing the case file is the first of the five steps you should take to prepare for the hearing. Let's quickly review each step. The case file contains information the Employment Security Commission, or ESC, has collected about your case. The referee will consider the information in the file when he makes his decision. In many, but not all cases, the file will be available at your local ESC office a few days before the hearing. Call the appeals referee to arrange to look through the file. You can ask the referee to give you copies of the material in the file so you can review them at home. The file contains a number of forms that will help you prepare for your hearing. The forms will include statements made by both you and the employer. Be sure to look for the forms or papers that record what your employer has said about the reasons you quit or were fired. Knowing what the employer is going to say will help you gather evidence to show that they are wrong. You should also review any forms that record what you have told the Employment Security Commission. Make sure that what you say at the hearing is consistent with what you have already told the ESC. ABC Mills reported that they discharged Estelle because she did not call in every day when she was absent. They say that was a violation of the company's written policies. Estelle doesn't deny that she was absent from August 11th through the 19th. Her aunt was very sick, and Estelle had to take care of her. Estelle's sister called the mill on Wednesday and left a message with her supervisor, Joyce Jones, that Estelle's aunt had been taken to the hospital in Charlotte. Joyce gave Estelle the phone message slip and told her she could leave to be with her aunt. The next day, Estelle called Joyce before her shift and told Joyce that her aunt was very sick and she would be out for at least a week. Joyce told her to call back when she had more information. Estelle did not call on Friday. When Estelle called the next Monday, Joyce yelled at Estelle for not calling Friday and told Estelle she was expected to call in every day. After she was instructed to call in daily, either Estelle or her sister called in each morning before her shift. Estelle thought she had done everything she was told, but when she returned to work, she was fired. The file also contains the determination by adjudicator. This form gives the adjudicator's determination that you were disqualified for unemployment benefits, the reasons that the determination was made, and the law on which the adjudicator relied. The most common reasons people are disqualified include, one, you quit your job without good cause attributable to your employer, such as leaving your job because your personal situation changed. Two, you were discharged for misconduct connected with work. Misconduct means that you were completely at fault. Three, you were discharged for substantial fault connected with the work. Substantial fault means the reasons you were fired were partly your fault. If you're disqualified for misconduct, you lose all your unemployment benefits. But if you're disqualified for substantial fault, you only lose 4 to 13 weeks of benefits. In Estelle's case, the adjudicator ruled that Estelle was discharged for misconduct. It is important that Estelle present evidence at the hearing that what she did was not misconduct. After you have reviewed the file, you should gather any documents that support your story. The ESC requires that you bring three copies of the documents to the hearing. Estelle will bring three copies of a phone message that helps prove her case. Some facts can be proven by presenting testimony from a witness. To be effective, the witness should have first-hand knowledge of the facts about which she is going to testify. She should not testify about what someone else said or told her. It is very important that you talk with the person who is going to be your witness before the hearing so that you know exactly what they are going to say. Be sure that their testimony will help your case. Estelle's witness is going to testify about calling ABC Mills to let them know Estelle would be out. Sometimes a witness may not want to testify for you. Other times a witness may be willing to testify for you but might have trouble getting off from work. In either case, you should ask the appeals referee to issue a subpoena, which is a legal document that requires the witness to attend the hearing. You need to ask the referee for a subpoena several days before the hearing. Exercise caution. Only request a subpoena if you are sure that the witness's testimony will back up your story. A witness who is reluctant to testify may not tell the truth at the hearing. You should make a checklist of all the evidence you want to present, what you want each witness to testify about, 
the questions you want to ask the employer, and what you want to say in your testimony. Before the hearing, you should practice what you're going to say during your testimony. It will help you organize your thoughts and be more confident during the hearing. Estelle has examined the file, brought a document to use as evidence, brought a witness, made a checklist, and practiced her testimony. She is prepared to present her case. Mr. Bossman, let me begin by asking you a few questions. If you were fired, the referee will usually start by asking the employer questions. If you quit, the referee will usually begin by asking you questions. If your case does not involve either a quit or a discharge, for instance, if the ESC finds that you are not available for work, your employer will probably not be at the hearing. Who made the decision to fire Ms. Worker? I did. Why did you make that decision? Estelle was absent from work for several days. She did not call in each day before her shift. Is there a policy that requires her to call in every day? Yes, it's in our company handbook. Estelle was given a copy of the handbook when she was hired. She was also informed of this orally when she was hired. She did not follow the policy and call back the several days she was absent. Here is a copy of the handbook. Did Ms. Worker call in at all? Uh, let's see. Yes, she called in and talked to Joyce Jones on three of the days. But she didn't call in on the other days. Mrs. Jones told me that she, she informed Estelle to call back every day. Your employer may say things that are not true or make you angry. Do not respond then. Make a note of what he said so you can correct it later. Is there anything else you would like to say about this firing? Yes, this isn't the first time that Estelle broke our policy. She was given a warning last year when she was two hours late while her car was broke down. Ms. Worker, do you have any questions? Yes, I do. You have the right to ask the employer questions. This is called cross-examination. You do not have to ask any questions. If you do choose to ask questions, here are some things not to do. Do not expect the employer to admit he was lying. Few people will ever do that. No one really told me about the policy when I was hired, did they? Yes, they did. Do not ask a question that gives the employer a chance to repeat or improve his story. Why did you fire me when you knew my aunt was sick and I had to be with her? I fired you because you were absent and did not report that you would be gone before every shift. You know about the policy. Had violated it last year. You were not fired because you were taking care of your aunt. You were fired because you didn't inform us and give us a chance to have a replacement worker on the days that you were absent. Don't give testimony instead of asking a question. Joyce didn't tell me I had to call in every day, and I didn't know that was the policy. That's testimony, not a question. You can only ask Mr. Bossman a question. Finally, don't argue with the witness. It will make the appeals referee less willing to listen to what you are saying. I wasn't absent on Friday, was I? Yes, you were. No, I wasn't. You're lying. I'm not lying. You were absent. Ms. Worker, please do not argue with the witness. You'll have an opportunity later to give your version of what happened. Here are some tips for using cross-examination to help your case. Ask questions that can be answered yes or no, and do not give the employer a chance to restate his version of the story. You didn't work at the plant when I was hired, did you? No, I didn't. Use cross-examination if you can get the employer to admit important facts in your favor. The policy doesn't say that I have to talk to you when I call in, does it? No, it doesn't. Use cross-examination if you can show the employer's lack of first-hand knowledge. You don't have any first-hand information about when I spoke to Joyce and what we said to each other, do you? I only know what she told me. But you weren't there, and you didn't hear what we said to each other. 
Uh, no, I didn't. Let's review. Cross-examine the witness if you can ask questions that can be answered yes or no, or you can get the employer to admit facts in your favor, or you can show the employer's lack of first-hand knowledge. Otherwise, do not ask any questions. If you do cross-examine, remember, do not expect the employer to admit he is lying. Do not ask a question that gives the employer a chance to repeat and improve his story. Do not give testimony instead of asking a question, and do not argue with the witness. Do you have any more questions? No, sir. That's all. Mr. Bossman, is there anything else you want to say? I just want to say that the attendance policy is important because we need to be able to keep up our production schedule. If employees don't let us know that they're going to be absent, it hurts the company and other employees. Ms. Worker, I have a few questions for you. Were you aware of the company's attendance policy? The appeals referee will probably ask you some questions. Answer them calmly. You'll have a chance to testify afterwards. Well, I knew I had to let them know if I was going to be out, and I did that. But I didn't know that I had to call them every day. My sister had called the plant on August 10th and left a message with my supervisor, Joyce Jones, saying that my aunt was sick and had to be taken to the hospital. Miss Jones gave me that message, and she told me I could go home. Here's the message, and here's a copy for you, Mr. Bossman. Be sure that you give the evidence you brought to the appeals referee. Remember to bring three copies. I told Joyce that my aunt didn't have any relatives in this area but my sister and me, and that I'd probably have to be out for a while. Joyce told me that I should call in and let her know how long I was going to be out. On Thursday the 11th, I called Joyce and I told her that my aunt was really bad and that I'd probably need to be out for about a week. Joyce said that she understood and I should just let her know when I had new information. On Friday the 12th, I didn't know anything new, so I didn't call. On Monday the 15th, I called and Joyce was really upset. She yelled at me and asked me why I hadn't called on Friday, and then she told me that I needed to call in every day. That was the first time she told me I had to call in every day. So on Tuesday the 16th, I called, and Joyce wasn't there, but I left a message for her telling her I was going to be out. On the 17th and 18th, my aunt was really sick, and so my sister called for me. But on Friday the 19th, I called and left a message again for Joyce. I thought I did everything they asked me to do. But on Monday the 22nd, when I went in for my shift, they told me I was fired. Were you given a copy of this employee handbook? No, they didn't have any when I was hired. They said they were gonna have some more printed up, but I never got one. Is there anything else you want to tell me for the record? Remember, this is your only chance to get your side of the story in the record. Look over your checklist and notes, then make sure that you have said everything you wanted. Mr. Bossman says that I signed a paper saying that I received a handbook. I don't remember that. But the day I was hired, I signed a lot of papers, and I didn't read them all. So I could have signed that paper without knowing that's what it said. Mr. Bossman, do you have any questions of Ms. Worker? Yes, I do. The employer will have a chance to cross-examine you. You said that you talked to Joyce on August the 12th and the 15th. You called in on the 19th, but Joyce wasn't there. Who did you speak with when you called on the 19th? I'm not sure. I, I think it was that new girl. I can't remember her name. I I'm not sure who I talked to. You seem so sure about the two times you really did call in. You didn't remember who you talked to the other times because you really never made those calls, did you? Sometimes an employer's question can make you lose your temper and give an angry response. Are you calling?
calling me a liar? You can't talk to me like that. You're the liar. Ms. Worker, I will not allow this type of behavior to take place in my hearing. Please keep your voice down. Responding angrily will make the appeals referee less likely to believe what you have to say. Sometimes you might feel intimidated and respond passively. You really never made those calls, did you? I'm, I'm sorry, I just can't remember. I, I just can't. You need to speak up. Uh, do you have anything else to say? No, I'm sorry. Responding passively makes it seem like you're not so sure about your testimony and weakens your credibility. Remember, your goal is to get your story across in a clear and understandable manner. Even if the employer makes you angry or tries to intimidate you, respond calmly. You really never made those calls, did you? I'm not sure who I spoke with, but I do know those calls were made. On the 19th, I called about 7.45 from a payphone at the hospital. The person I spoke with, like I said, I think it was the new girl, told me she'd put the note in Joyce's box. You knew about the policy, didn't you? Didn't you receive a warning a year ago for not calling in? I was late once last year when my car broke down. I had to walk to the 7-Eleven and call someone to come and fix it. That took about three hours. When I got to work, Joyce told me that I should have called in, but she didn't write me up for it. And she didn't tell me that I had to call in every single day if I was going to be out for a long time. I don't have any more questions. Ms. Worker, why don't you have your witness testify now? Ask your witness short questions, then allow them to tell their story from beginning to end. Make sure you have discussed your questions with the witness beforehand. Sally, tell the referee who you are. I'm Sally Best, and I'm Estelle's sister. Did you ever call ABC Mills to tell them I wouldn't be there? Yes, I did. Tell us when you did that and what you said. On August 17th and 18th, our aunt was doing real bad, so Estelle asked if I would call into the mill for her. I had been arranging to work second shift, so I was at the hospital with Estelle in the mornings. On both of those days, I called in and talked to the girl in the office, and I told her that Estelle's aunt was still real sick, and so she wouldn't be in. Those are all the questions I have. Do you have any questions, Mr. Bossman? Yes, I do. Can you tell me who you talked with when you called the office? I don't really know. Um, I know it wasn't Joyce because I recognize her voice. Um, it was just some girl in the office. You didn't take the time to find out her name? Well, I thought I just had to call the mill, and I did that. Um, with this, our aunt so sick and Estelle all upset about it, you know, I had other things on my mind. Maybe you had too much on your mind to really call the plant. Mr. Bossman, that's not a question. Do you have any questions of Ms. Best? No, sir. Is there any more evidence? No, sir. Mr. Bossman, would you like to make a closing statement? Estelle violated our company policy by not calling in every day she was out. She knew it was our policy. We terminated her because she violated that policy. We can't run a mill and keep up our production if employees don't let us know when they're going to be out. Ms. Worker, do you have a closing statement? Yes, sir. Be sure to use your checklist to make sure that you say everything that you think is important. This is your last chance to tell the appeals referee what you think are the real facts of the case. I did not know that I was supposed to call in every day that I was out. On August 10th, I told my supervisor, Joyce Jones, that I would be out for a few days. When I called on August 11th, I told her that I would be out for about a week. Joyce said that she understood. She didn't tell me that I had to call in every day. She told me that I should call in when I had more information. The first time I had more information was on August 15th. When I called that day, Joyce told me for the first time that I had to call in every day that I was out. After that, my sister or I called every day before my shift. 
I did not receive a copy of the policy, nor was I told about the policy when I was hired. Mr. Bossman really has no first-hand information about this. He didn't hear the conversation between me and Joyce, and he wasn't with the plant when I was hired. Thank you both. This hearing is now concluded. You will receive a decision within 10 to 21 days. The appeals referee will not make a decision at the hearing. He will write a decision and mail it to you in two or three weeks. If the decision is not in your favor, you have the right to appeal. Remember, to prepare for the hearing, you should review the case file, gather documents as evidence, get a witness if one will help your case, make a checklist, and to practice. At the hearing, remember to use your checklist. Make notes when someone says something that is not true so you can respond to it when you testify. Give the appeals referee your evidence. Follow the rules for cross-examination. Stay calm when you are cross-examined. And give a closing argument if permitted. Your case will, of course, have different facts from Estelle workers. The hearing room may look different, and the hearing may be a little more or less formal than our dramatization. But through careful preparation and presentation of your case, you can defend your rights at the hearing.